Hey everybody, I'm Lance and welcome to my channel and welcome to the Color Art Summer Education event. Now this video is called Make Paint Pouring Your Beach and I love a good double entendre and I'm going to show you how to make this beach scene with some paint pouring techniques. I'm going to tell you how you can win some wonderful prizes from Color Art in just a minute but first I'm going to show you how I mix a beautiful color from the new Primary Elements Frosted Sorbet line called Blue Grotto. What you see that I've done so far is I've put a little bit of the Joe Sonia varnish into the cup in the bottom, just enough to kind of coat the bottom of the cup, not a whole lot. And as you can see there, I'm using the Frosted Sorbet Blue Grotto, and it's such a beautiful, sparkly color. And I'm going to put a couple of heaping paddles of that into there. I got a little sloppy and dropped a little bit. <laughs> In this beach scene that I'm doing, this fluid art beach scene, I am going to be mixing my paints in a few different ways with different pouring mediums. And I'm doing that on purpose because it creates some cool things within the kind of dirty flip cups, which is basically the basis of the techniques that'll be used in this painting. And as you can see there, I'm making my slurry. I'm getting the Joe Sonia mixed up with the Primary Elements Blue Grotto and making sure that's kind of smoothed out. And then I'm putting some Vivid Enamel into the mix and I'm gonna mix that up. But then I'm also going to use some GAC 800. And so this was kind of a little bit of uh, the difference of what this color, how it was made up. And it worked well with all the other colors. And you kind of want to vary your consistencies and your pouring mediums a little bit in this type of technique at least I find because it gives you some more interesting um, shapes and designs and flow when and cells when the flip cups are you know flipped over and then you tilt them off and stretch the image out <laughs> Now I'm showing you how I'm layering my cup for the sky and I have my base paint of a white that I'll talk about in just a second but as you're seeing here I'm putting the colors in just kind of making a dirty cup for the sky with my colors. Some of the colors in my sky are French silk which is an interference gold and morning light which is an interference blue from prison, the prison pour line and I put that in with some light blue permanent Liquitex and some Liquitex silver and a color from folk art um, called Sky Flash and it's another iridescent color and these all played well together in uh, my white base which kind of acts as like you're building a soup <laughs> Now the broth for that soup would be my white mixture and I'm going to throw that recipe up on the screen here. Now you can see that line of cloudy looking cells in the middle there. I really liked that but I think that I don't end up being able to keep that in the end. But when I eventually do get to the end and you see the sky that I end up with, I was pretty pleased with it after I ended up adding another flip cup to the sky. I'm putting the white base coat on the bottom there and kind of stretching around making sure it's nicely coated because I'm going to do some dirty cups in an ice tray and I'm going to load up this ice tray with my colors that I want of the sea and I'm doing it with some of the deeper colors towards the top of the ice tray compartments and then kind of varying them with a little bit more of the medium tone blues through the middle and then the lighter tones through the bottom. And then in the very bottom chamber, I'm gonna put the two colors for my sand. Now, I've seen a couple of other fluid artists pour from an ice tray, one of them being Bonnie from Bonnie's Flow Art but I've never seen anybody incorporate it for a landscape or a seascape pour. So I thought I'd give it a try. And as you can see here, it created some cool effects. Like you're getting a lot of these horizontal banding 
that can really lend itself to this type of pour and I really really liked it and I didn't use a whole lot of what this looks like um, in the end as you'll see when you see the finished product of this but I am going to go and use this again this is definitely going to be a technique that I'm going to revisit and use maybe in a couple of different paintings now while you're watching me kind of tilt this around and play with it a little bit more back and forth I want to tell you a little bit more about the color art summer education event you can win prizes there are 14 artists that are participating in this and if you watch their videos there will be a secret word in each of their videos that will create the secret phrase you will need in order to enter to win the $400 grand prize from color art and if you watch until the end of my video there will be a secret word that I will post somewhere within the video so be sure and watch along till the end when you collect all of the words you can go to the link that's in my description box and you can post your guess of the secret phrase you will have until the 19th of August to enter be sure to watch all 14 artists that are participating in the summer educational event there will be 14 individual prizes given too that each artist will give away a six piece prism pour set valued at $50 if you want to be entered to those you have to subscribe like and comment on each of the artists videos and you will be entered to win one of the mini sets so good luck to everybody and I hope you win now getting back to what's going on in our seascape I have been putting down some Amsterdam titanium white out of that squeeze bottle in little lines to kind of create the idea of waves and then I was blowing the cell activator out to kind of give that feeling of crashing waves and surf okay so just there you saw me do the second dirty flip cup for the sky because I wasn't extremely happy with after I tilted everything around I lost some of the really good bits of what I had for the sky so I wanted to do another one to hopefully create a little bit more cloud-like effect and selling action and that's exactly what I got I was very pleased with this second one now I'm just kind of tilting it around and then you have to kind of let it sit and develop too because the reactions will still keep happening there will still be um, there's a white satin enamels from Art Deco and that creates some cell action that continues to happen after it kind of sits there for a while I mixed together some morning light and blue grotto along with some water and started doing some glazing as you can see through there with a little bit of light blue permanent and now I'm going back in and I am going to start delineating and defining uh, waves with some brushwork because I'm kind of listening to the pour and the pour is giving me kind of where the wave line is and now I'm just going to go back in with some you know, fine arts brushwork technique and try to create these waves and try to give them more shape and shade and um, volume and I really enjoy doing this and I think it's kind of fun to blend these two to blend the beauty of the fluid art pour with using these fine art techniques and brushwork and kind of creating a little bit of a hybrid painting and uh, I think it makes for interesting artwork now I'm showing you that I'm using the prism pour interference blue morning light and I'm going to use it along with some of the blue grotto frosted sorbet color pigments I'm gonna add some of those color pigments to it what I'm doing is creating a glaze I'm also going to use some goldens glazing fluid and I'm going to create a glaze that's going to give this depth of field to the sea so that it kind of looks a little bit more muted but luminous and that you're getting this kind of idea that it's receding back into space 
I'd like to thank Leslie Onstadt of Color Art for organizing the summer educational event and for including me and for donating all these wonderful prizes that some lucky viewers are going to receive. As you'll notice, I have also taped off my horizon line. I've measured it out, make sure it's level and equal, and used some frog tape to make sure I get a crisp line there when I'm adding this glaze. And as you can see now, I know this is sped up so fast, but a lot of the video did have to be sped up because there was a lot of different clips and you know a lot of time. And so you could see that horizon line coming in and that lightning, that kind of lighter effect that it's giving, it's, it's um, kind of, a, it's receding into the distance. And I also didn't care for my initial land masses back there and what, how I had painted them with the green. I, I thought it was a little jarring for what the whole painting looks like. So I wanted to use some more of the colors from the sky, like you see some of that purple that's in the sky and the blues and the blue tones from the ocean and so I thought this was a much better resolution for that. <laughs> it, I was a lot happier with the look and I think it kind of just goes well and as, a, as you can see I also painted a sun and some sunlight uh, cast across the water. If you've been waiting for the words to the secret phrase, my words are to express. Well, I hope you enjoyed me showing you how to make paint pour in your beach. <laughs> Thank you for hanging out with me on this Fluid Art Seascape Pouring tutorial. I hope you found this educational or somewhat entertaining. And if you did, please subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up and a like, and leave me a comment. Be sure to do the same for all the other artists in this educational event so you'll be entered to win the individual prizes. Be sure to follow along through each artist's video for their words for the secret phrase. And then you have until the 19th to get your guests in for the secret phrase and I'll provide the link for that as well as the links to everyone else's videos. Be sure and check them out. Thanks for watching and please come back and visit me again soon.